Good day to all. I am Jose Ignacio C. Cantes, an 11th Team E student, and I am here with you today to present the work done by Team A. As clearly seen on this slide, meiosis is the topic given to us. We have defined meiosis and gave a lot of in-depth details and explanations about it which will be presented later on in our presentation. The flow presentation. This is the order of how we did the activity given to us. We first have the introduction, where the tasks are assigned to different groups. For Team A, we've been given meiosis. Next step is making the project where we discussed what and how to do things, and also divided the task into ourselves to easily complete the given activity. Next is the presentation of the output that will take place later on, and lastly, sharing of a reflection which will take place at the end of our presentation. These are the members who are part of our group and contributed to the output that we have now. These are the tasks which we had to do in this activity. The first one here is answering the challenging question. The challenging question mentioned is the one found in the link for our current activity, and our answer to the questions given are, number one, thanks to the cell cycle and the never-ending cell division, the wounds that our bodies can get easily heal in a matter of days, number two, because different humans have different combinations of genetic materials, and number three, the process is called meiosis, where a single parent cell divides into four daughter cells which are genetically unique from each other. And that is our answer for the first task. Moving on, the next task given to us is to build a model showing and describing the stages of meiosis. Due to our current situation, we cannot meet up and make one complete model of the stages of meiosis. Instead, we have divided the stages between the members, took pictures and recorded videos to be provided as proof that we have completed the given activity without committing any violation. Lastly, we had to make a short reflection from the activity. Each member made a short reflection about what they have learned from the activity and more. Here we have the plan that we have followed to complete the activity given to us within the time limit. Now, before our presentation, what is meiosis? So, meiosis is a process where a single parent cell divides twice to produce four daughter cells containing half the original amount of genetic information. Since they have half the number of chromosomes that the parent cell had, they are called haploids. That being said, they are genetically unique to each other. The cells that have been made are our sex cells, the sperms and the eggs. So, meiosis focuses ma on mainly producing our sex cells or gametes. Since meiosis is a process, it has stages which cells undergo. Meiosis can be divided into eight stages. They are divided between the first time the cell divides, meiosis 1, and the second time it divides, meiosis 2. So, mitosis and meiosis undergo the same stages, but unlike mitosis, meiosis goes through the stages twice. And now for the presentation of our output. The first stage is prophase 1. And here we have our model of a prophase 1. 
we've used different colored yarns and paper plates to make our models for meiosis. So what happens during Pro Phase 1? Well, in this phase, the chromatins condenses and curls up on itself to produce strands of DNA along with some proteins to produce chromosomes. Then, the chromosomes condense into X-shaped structures which can be seen under a microscope. These chromosomes are composed of two sister chromatids containing identical genetic information. These chromosomes then pair up with other chromosomes. They are called homologous pairs since they are chromosomes of approximately the same size and they contain the same type of genes in the same location. As the chromosomes are all paired up, they may proceed to exchange parts of their DNA in processes called recombination and crossing over. Recombination, or homologous recombination, is where genetic information exchange happens between the homologous pairs, which then creates genetically unique chromosomes. Crossing over is that process where the homologous pairs are lined up and then exchange segments of their chromosomes from one another. Long story short, Recombination is responsible for genetic diversity and crossing over allows DNA molecules in chromosomes to change positions from one homologous chromosome to another. Then, after all that, the membrane around the nucleus dissolves away, releasing the chromosomes. Centrioles then move to different sides of the cell and as it moves, leaves behind spindle fibers. In meiosis, we call these fibers the meiotic spindle which consists of microtubules and other proteins and extends across the cell. Then we go into the second stage, metaphase 1. Here we have our model for metaphase 1. After the centrioles reach their destination and the membranes around the nucleus disintegrates, the chromosome pairs which have completed the recombination and the crossing over line up next to each other along the center. After that, the meiotic spindle extend and attach to the one chromosome of each pair. Then we head on to anaphase 1. This model that we have made may be useful to you all to easily visualize what happens in this stage. So, in anaphase 1, the pair of chromosomes are pulled apart from each other by the meiotic spindle. The chromosome pairs are now separated, each pole having the different chromosomes. Unlike mitosis and meiosis too, the sister chromatids stay together. And then we move on to Tilu phase 1. Here is a lovely model designed by one of my teammates. So, in Tilu phase 1, the split of the pair of chromosomes happened and their move to different poles of the cell is completed. At each pole of the cell, a full set of chromosomes gather together. A membrane then forms around each set which then creates two new nuclei. The single cell then pinches in the middle to form two separate daughter cells, each containing a full set of chromosomes within a nucleus. This process is known as cytokinesis. Now we move on to the second part of meiosis, which is conveniently called meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 has the same name of its stages as meiosis 1, but they all end in 2. Now we have prophase 2. This is the model made for this stage. Now, in this stage, there are two daughter cells, each having 23 chromosomes, which is equal to 23 pairs of chromatids. These daughter cells go through the same process it did in meiosis 1, except recombination and crossing over does not happen here. Then we proceed to metaphase 2. Here we have the model for metaphase 2. After the membrane once again disintegrates and the centrioles reach their destination at the different sides of the cells, the chromosomes line up end to end along the equator of the cell. This time, however, the chromosomes are lined up alone in each daughter cell unlike in meiosis 1 where the chromosomes line up along with their homologue. Once again, meiotic spindle fibers left by the centrioles extend and attach to one of each sister chromatid. Nearly at the end, we have anaphase 2. Here, we present a visual guide as to how anaphase 2 looks as it happens. The sister chromatids are then pulled away from each other due to the action of the meiotic spindle. The chromatids are pulled to different poles of each cell which now makes them single chromosomes. And the last stage of the whole process of meiosis is telophase 2. 
and again, a visual guide and our work and understanding as to how till phase 2 happens. The separation and the move of the chromosomes to different poles in each cell is once again complete. At each pole of the cell, a full set of chromosomes gather together. The membrane forms once again around each set of chromosomes to create two new cell nuclei. And to finish all of this, cytokinesis once again happens. Finally, meiosis is completed and four cells have been made. After all that, four granddaughter cells are made, each with half a set of chromosomes or haploids. In males, the cells made are all sperm cells, while in females, one of the cells is an egg cell, while the others are polar bodies which are small cells that do not develop into eggs. And here is a diagram which is the result of our group's hard work. Before ending this presentation, here we have the compilation of our reflection on this activity. For this output, my leader assigned me on Metaphase 2 or Meiosis 2. I made a model using yarn and paper plate. At first, I had to study this specific stage of meiosis to fully understand what is on the model that I am going to make. Then, I proceeded with doing the model. At first, it was hard for me as I am not naturally artistic. But after a while, I finally figured out how to do it and I was proud of the outcome. With the help of this activity, my understanding about meiosis deepens because this activity allows me to be immersed with the eight different stages of meiosis, specifically at phase 2. Moreover, the information that I've gained in doing this project will add to my pre-existing knowledge about cell division. And lastly, it taught me to be creative, innovative, and to have teamwork despite the situation we are experiencing right now. This activity gave me an in-depth learning about meiosis, its process, importance, and difference from mitosis. By making the model of meiosis, it allowed me to be more creative and resourceful. Most importantly, executing this activity made me realize that cells and cell division play a very important role in our body. It is essential for our growth, development, repair, and reproduction. To summarize all of my learnings in this activity, meiosis is important for three main reasons. It allows sexual reproduction of diploid organisms, it enables genetic diversity, and it aids the repair of genetic defects. Throughout this activity, I learned more about meiosis and its eight stages. Through making the model I was assigned to, I understood more deeply how the cells divide and what goes on in each stage. It also allowed me to be creative and to collaborate well with my members. Our existence came from the very process of cell division and of the beginning of our lives to progress because of meiosis or the cell division that occurs in sexually reproducing organisms that, unlike mitosis, involves two stages of division and results in four-celled replicas. This activity exhibited the stages of meiosis, wherein we used our artistic skills and scientific capabilities to demonstrate what happens during the process. And so, this developed our simple craftsmanship and the ability to portray what happens on a microscopic level. What I have learned from this activity is the steps or stages of meiosis, the cell division of our gametes or our reproductive cells. The activity gave me more information on this topic which is for me a very difficult lesson. It helps me evaluate of what are happening in every stage of the division that made the cell from a diploid to a haploid. In doing the activity, I have learned many things like how meiosis takes place and how it is significant in producing sex cells. I also learned that in making the model, it is important that the materials we needed are complete. I had a hard time in making it because I can't find any scissors, so I just used a knife in cutting the yarn. But overall, I had a great time in making the model. I've learned a lot about this topic, which is meiosis, that we presented and defined clearly to you all. This information that I have gathered may be useful to me in the career that I wish to pursue. Cell division is an important process in our body. 
It is responsible in our growth, development, and reparation of our damaged tissues and organs. This cell division meiosis, to be precise, has a process similarly in mitosis, but unlike mitosis, meiosis has a double stage of dividing. Prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, and telophase 2. This has a particular job to successfully divide our cells. By performing this activity, it gained a knowledge of how this kind of process works in our body. It begins to replicate in chromosomes, crossing over, pairing chromosomes, pulling to opposite sides, and dividing the cytoplasms to successfully perform the whole process. And there we have it. That was a presentation of our work for the current activity. Thank you for listening, and once again, I am Mr. Ignatius C. Cantes from 11 STEM E. Good day to you all.